Welcome to Living Mosaic, a program of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden, and I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. I'm the tip of the visible part of the structure that is bringing you this show, this opportunity. The Spark of Humanity Network is founded on the insight that there is a spark of humanity in each one of us and a spark of something in the ant that's exploring the lilacs here. Um, Oh, there it is. Um, And that that spark cannot be corrupted. It cannot be extinguished. It cannot be put out. It It cannot be polluted, but the area around it can be. The language we use is baffled, defended, distorted. But the spark itself is not baffled. It can be defended because that's external. And the territory around it can be terribly distorting and distorted. So the Living Mosaic project of the Spark of Humanity Network is an offering an invitation to open up to consider the idea, the concept that there is a solution to the current long-term distress of the human species and other species on this planet. And the I don't need to enumerate them. You may have a different list than I do, um, although I try not to list them because <clears throat> I find that doesn't do anything for my morale. The basic premise of the Living Mosaic Project is that there is a solution and that it may be conceived as a living mosaic, living and evolving mosaic, three-dimensional, you know, maybe a dance, and that we are each unique and essential bits within that mosaic or within that dance. Each unique and essential. And we are not our essential, our uniqueness is part of our as being essential. We can't be someone else. We can't do somebody else's essential task, offering, gift, life here. We need to find what we need to become because it's not cognitive, at least in my experience. It's more experiential. Mm, I think this is right. Mm, this is right. This isn't so right. And we need to become that in order to fit into our niche, our living and evolving niche within the living and evolving mosaic. So today we are discussing the concept of safe. I suspect during our first few moments of life, extra, extra uterine life, once we're out damp and confused, that we may not be feeling safe. And one way of looking at the Spark of Humanity project is that that creates bafflement. How do I survive in this thing? All these big, loud people with these bright lights or, you know, maybe good music and dim lights. But this is a very different experience than I was living five minutes ago. And how do I be safe? And that leads to the bafflement. And then from that grow the distortions. Well, if I do this, then they do that. And then from that grows the defenses. I need to keep myself from doing that. So they're the inner defenses, they're the denial and the outer defenses. Don't get close to that part of my distortion because it's too painful and I'll snap at you or I'll 
do something bad, so stay away, not safe. Not safe, stay away. So the, the idea of safe, how do we, how do we, we are essentially safe. That's foundational to this work. That in essence, we are safe. Our bodies may not be safe. Our attitudes may not be safe. Our egos probably aren't safe at all. <clears throat> our assumptions and our habits of thought and response may not be safe at all. But we, the essential us, our spark of humanity, or in the case of my friend, our friend in the lilacs, my, the spark of ant, is safe. And to how do we support each other in creating an atmosphere in this world where we come to trust that we are essentially safe and that we support others in understanding themselves as being safe? There's a channeled work that came from, I don't know, the 60s or 70s of the 20th century called The Course in Miracles. And one of its basic teachings is that defenses invite attack. So the less defended we are, the safer we are. How's that for a concept? Our defenses do not keep us safe. They actually create a a less safe situation for those qualities I was mentioning, like our attitudes, our defenses, our, our, not our attitude, our defenses, our prejudices, our ego, our physical well-being, our financial well-being. The defenses, they just keep calling for more defenses and thicker defenses. And when that becomes too painful or expensive, we go into the inner defenses, which we, I think of as denial. I'm not going to allow myself to look at that. I'm not going to allow myself to think of that. I'm not going to question that. I'm just going to remain defended from myself and from my awareness of reality. Because our spark of humanity, or germ of true, if you prefer that language, knows where the reality is, understands the essential safe. And so when we, when we don't want to trust that, or when we feel that it would profit us to ignore that, we can earn more money, we can make more money, we can get more worldly power, therefore we can attract more people. Our wives and husbands and children will love us more because we have more money and we have more power. And so to become defenseless does not seem like a good idea to us. We, we want to we build our careers, our self-understanding, our visions of what we want for our lives in the world on the idea of becoming better defended. A fancier car goes faster. Um, Or being a greater whatever. And that, and those things like defenses, there's never enough. We can, we always want more. We never feel entirely safe. All we can do is want more of what we have, and what we have is not satisfying us, is not an expression of our spark, our true self, our essential self, our unique self, the the way the the us, the the little piece of shell or little gem or piece of broken mirror or glass, and often it's broken, that fits into the niche in the living mosaic where we're needed where the mosaic is drawing us into the, the whole current, the whole force of the universe is working to try to shape us and help us, inspire us, 
make it so painful that we're willing to let go of the parts of ourselves that are not the essential part, not the unique part. Everything that is not needed to be part of this living mosaic, we, we are being encouraged to let go of. And if we're clinging to it harder and harder and harder because that's scary, we don't know it, um, then things will get harder, crustier, sharper, tougher, meaner. And we'll, you know, either finally we'll get it, and that's part of what the Spark of Humanity project is about, and the and the Living Mosaic project of the Spark of Humanity project is about, is is supporting people, helping you, helping me, because doing this helps me, trust me. We teach best what we most need to learn, we have heard. To let go of all those things that that are burdening the journey towards becoming our true selves, towards becoming only our sparks, with an awareness and a consciousness that's only, it's our spark and our connection with the other sparks, with the other facets, the other beings within the mosaic, this living mosaic. So we begin to understand that we're, we're just a small but totally essential bit of this lovely, moving, living, 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 evolving, living, dynamic dance process. And that that's, that's, where, that's where we're safe. We're not safe in all those things that our parents probably told us and our friends on the schoolyard and, you know, our minds, our fears, our acculturation tells us that that's, that's not where we're truly safe. When we think about it, don't think, oh, if I have more of this, I'll be safe. If I just get rid of her, I'll be safe. If I could just change their minds, I'll be safe. No, 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 it's all, it's from within, it's, it's lodging, lodged within ourselves, it's, an, it's a crucial, essential part of our being, that place of safety, that dynamic of safety. It's not, it's a, it's like you know, wave and particle. If you look at it one way, if it's a wave, you look at it another way, it's a particle. <clears throat> the, the place of safety is not the place. It's more like a song. Or it's more like a dance. Or, but you know, you look at it one way, it's, it's hard to talk about which is why it takes me so long to get around to the point of admitting it's hard to talk about. But it's there within you. Just let's take a moment or two, calm the breath, maybe close the eyes, and find that <clears throat> place or moment or image or experience of safety within ourselves, just so we can all be there at the same time. So that probably felt different for every one of us. And you're welcome to email us how it felt for you. We can respond to that the next time we're here at Orca Media. But for me, it's sort of like, a, okay, I get to the place of safety, the song of safety, and it's like some corset. I've been wearing so let's go and I can feel myself spread out. But it's from inside where I'm safe. And knowing that that is available to us. I think that if we, I tried a variation on this a few years ago, to touch into that place of safe. twice a day 
maybe three times a day. It doesn't take long, does it? Hardly takes any time at all. We can learn to do it while we're just breathing or just whatever. We can learn to be in that, touch into that place of safe. And because that's where we belong, that's where we become the most fruitful participants in this living mosaic that is the solution to the world's nightmares. It draws us to it. If we make a practice of being in our place of safe, or if you prefer the spark language, if we make if we get in touch with our spark of humanity or a germ of true and connect with the spark in someone else, they don't need to know we're doing it. And, and so that strengthens for me, that strengthens my sense of that place, that the spark, the germ. And that's why I'm safe. And to, to do that, it's a spiritual practice. If we choose to practice that, if we practice that whether we choose to or not, that will sort of reset our compass because that's, that's the true north. That's, that's the magnetic north. That's where we want to be naturally as beings is we, we want to be in that the trajectory of safe, towards safe, towards deeper safety into the life of the mosaic which is the solution, which is where life is. Her life is safe. That's up to us. If we choose to consider, if we choose to move into the possibility that life is safe, then life begins to draw us toward our deeper safety, toward deeper into that place of safe, deeper into the dynamic of safe, where we begin to experience that the safety is something that accretes to us because we become full members of the mosaic. We become full participants in the dance. And the dance is alive and evolving. The mosaic is alive, alive, evolving. And when we're in our true place in that, then we are, that life is living through us and we are being drawn, flowed, danced as participants in that life, members of that dance, multidimensional, ever-evolving dance. So we have to stay awake. We can't just go asleep because we've found our place. And that that's and we're members of a community. We are we are woven into the the fabric of being. We cannot be extinguished. We cannot be corrupted. We we are we cannot be put out. We are we are part of it. And we're part of this life that is happening, and it's ongoing. And the more we allow ourselves, letting go of all those defenses and distortions, recognizing the bafflement, realizing, oh, okay, I am safe. I am safe, and I can experience the feeling of being safe as I let myself, as I surrender into this life of the mosaic, the dynamic of the dance, however we want to think about it. And we, that's where we, where our true safe is, and we can begin to experience it as we are willing to, and for me it takes decades to let go of everything that gets in the way of my experiencing that, and my, even my understanding it, much less letting go of everything that gets in the way of my experiencing it, but you know, I'm sharing with you the, the sort of 
generally, in a way, superficial understanding I have of this process, which is real and strong and effective. And it, the mosaic, in this sense, you know, wants us in our niches because it is not whole. It cannot fully function unless we have been drawn into its life, into where we belong in the mosaic, where we are not, <clears throat> where we are being our essential, unique selves. So we don't need to be comparing ourselves with that piece of the mosaic there because they're doing their thing. They're becoming themselves. We're becoming ourselves. And it all fits in together perfectly and functions as a whole. It's you know, the chore- choreographer of the dance knows where we belong and if we surrender to the dance, letting go of everything that gets in the way. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Um, And I think there are times when it can go to sort of like plateaus or jerky motion, climbing a stair, going down a staircase. It's, okay, yeah, I've got it, I've made this big leap. And then, you know, after a while, days, weeks, months, years, decades, uh, and oh, I thought I had it. So I need, you know, another leap is coming, or maybe just a slow slog. Um, But it's where life is. And just the concept that life is safe. Biological life, no. We all know better than that. We're all, well, I think we're all going to um, depart from these mortal bodies of ours at some point, some sooner, some later, some more painfully, some more gracefully. Um, but it's you know, generally inevitable. And so that's, that's not the point. That's sort of that physical body helps us learn about where to find true safe, where we are truly safe. And it's not about the body, and it's not about our status in the world, and it's not about how much money we make, and it's not about how our kids are doing in school. <clears throat> it's not about the job. <clears throat> it is perhaps, and because um, I believe, and you don't need to buy into this, I believe that we're all members of the mosaic, including the ant, who is back exploring that lilac leaf, that it's all, all creation is part of the mosaic. So the polar bears, the seals, the whales, the mycorrhizal network, the ants, we're each, we're all essential to the life of the mosaic. So, so to be willing to join that and cooperate and participate in it can be another angle of looking at this. This is, this is about, you know, it can be about the climate crisis. Or it can be about my personal sense of comfort. It doesn't make any difference you know, your angle of approach to becoming part of the mosaic, to be willing to do the work of encouraging yourself to surrender, to experience safe within yourself, so that you will be attracted to safe and willing to let go of everything that gets in the way. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember, we are on Facebook, and you are welcome to like us, or at least do what everyone does on Facebook. And thank you for the dear folks here at ORCA and Rose, the Spark Administrator, or I think she has a different job title, but anyway, she's the one that helps make this all possible along with Coleman and Zach and Jen and Christopher and you, because without you, it is nothing. Thank you.